Today, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how to do a physical assessment. I'm gonna go from the start as if I entered the patient's room and then I will walk you through the entire section, okay? First, I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna do hand hygiene. Before touching your patient, you always wanna wash your hands. Um, hi, Tressa. My name's Connie. Hi, Connie. I get to be your nurse today. Oh, great. How are you doing? I'm great. Good. Um, I'm just gonna put some gloves on here. Tressa, can you tell me what day of the week it is? Today is Wednesday. Okay. Do you know where you're at? I'm at Weber State. Okay. And can you tell me your date of birth? My date of birth is June 21st, 1988. Perfect, okay. So right there, I just checked her mental status. Does she know who she is? Is she alert and oriented? So I asked her where she's at, who she is, does she know the date of birth, and does she know our time that we are currently in right now? So that is uh, the first assessment technique you wanna do as soon as you walk in, make sure you're talking to the right patient. All right, Tressa, I'm going to do a head to toe assessment. Just make sure everything looks and sounds okay. Okay. All right. So I'm first gonna start with your head. I'm gonna look at the hair, make sure there's um, no um, hair loss. Have you noticed any hair loss at all? No. Okay, can I look at your ears? Look in and see if there's any drainage in either ear. Okay. And now I'm gonna look at your eyes, okay? Okay. So what I'm gonna have you do is just look straight ahead. And I'm going to shine this light your eye. Okay. All right, so right there I'm checking for pupils reacting. So are they reactive to light? And they will dilate and constrict as I do that. If they don't dilate and constrict, that's a problem. All right, I'm gonna take a look at your mouth. Can you say, ah? Uh? Ah. Uh. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> and have you noticed any drainage in your nose at all? No. Okay. All right, last thing I'm gonna have you do is just follow the pen. Can you look at it? Keep your head still. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So that is the head, ears, eyes, and nose. I'm next going to move down to the throat here and just feel for any lymph nodes that um, might be inflamed. You would be able to feel them um, rather easily if they are inflamed. All right. Now I'm going to move down to the heart and lungs. I'm going to start with the heart first and I'll walk you through that. I'm going to first start at the aortic and listen. So I'm going to find the aortic at the second intercostal space right to the sternum. I will move to the pulmonic, which is at the second intercostal space on the left side of the sternum. Next, I move down to herbs point, which is at the third intercostal space right um, to the side of the sternum. I then move down to the tricuspid. This is right underneath the breast tissues and at the fourth intercostal space. And then our last one is the mitral or apical. This is completely under the breast tissue and it is right um, below the nipple line or mid clavicular line. And at the fifth intercostal space is where you'll find that. All right, so that is your heart sounds. Everything sounds good there, Tressa. I'm now gonna listen to your lungs, okay? So with lungs, you're going to listen to between six to eight spots and you're gonna listen to to the right side and the left side. You're gonna compare sides. You're not just gonna to listen to the left side all the way down and then the right side. All right, take a big deep breath for me. Perfect. All right, you can breathe normal for a minute. Okay, perfect. All right, so notice how I went down from one side to the other side. That is helping me compare um, both sides to make sure they sound the same and that there's no um, abnormalities there. All right, I'm gonna have Tressa sit up and I'm going to listen to the back of your lungs now. All right, so one thing to take into consideration as you're listening to the back is where are the shoulder blades or the scapula? You do not wanna listen over those. Um, so you'll listen in between. It's right along the spine that you'll listen when you're listening to the upper lungs there. And as the shoulder blades start to go out, you're gonna follow the shoulder blades. Okay. One thing to take note when you're listening to the back of the lungs, don't listen down here. This is the hip area. You wanna make sure that 
you're listening just where the ribs are that is where the lung tissue is so you'll hear the lung sounds there one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check lung expansion here so you're gonna come down to the base of the lungs here put your thumbs together and you're gonna have your patient take a deep breath so Tressa will you take a big deep breath good and my thumbs separated equally so there was about a centimeter of space that spread during that so perfect thank you Tressa all right, so next I'm going to move to the abdominal area. With this, the first thing I wanna do before I touch the abdomen is I would lift the patient's gown up and then inspect. That is looking at the entire abdominal area. Um, is there, does it look distended? Is there any scars? Is there any um, bulges? What looks abnormal to you at the, when you're looking at the stomach? Next, I am going to actually auscultate. So I'm going to use my stethoscope and there are four quadrants. So I'm listening to the first quadrant. When you look at the belly button, you're gonna draw just a plus sign and you're gonna work around the belly button. So I am done with that. All right, I'm gonna just um, touch your stomach. Let me know if it hurts anywhere, okay? Any discomfort? Okay. So I'm as I'm filling her stomach, I'm feeling for different bulges, different um, shapes there and seeing if she has any pain. Watch their facial expression because sometimes they'll tell you there's no pain, but they may grimace. So double check and make sure you're watching facial expressions as they're um, telling you yes or no to those pain, um, if there's any pain at all. Yeah, I'm going to ask a few questions pertaining to the abdominal area as well. Tressa, are you um, passing gas? Yes. And are you having normal bowel movement? Yes. When was your last one? This morning. Perfect. Um, can you describe your um, normal bowel movement? They're just normal color, normal consistency, no constipation, okay. no diarrhea, anything Perfect. like that. Just formed? Yep. Brown? Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to move down to the um, urinary system. I am going to palpate just where the bladder is, which is the lower area. If she had a full bladder, you would be able to fill it up to where the belly button is potentially, depending on how full their bladder is. So um, always make sure your patient does not have to pee before you push, or you may cause them to wet the bed. Um, I should not feel anything unless there is urine actually in the bladder. So there's nothing there that feels good. Um, how is urination for you? It's it's just fine. No burning, okay. no abnormal odors, anything like that. Okay. P, is it yellow? Yep. To clear? Yep. Perfect. Next, I am going to just look at your skin. I've assessed the skin throughout the assessment so far because I've been looking under the patient's gown. So I've been able to see the chest, the stomach, and the back. Now I'm going to look at the arms and the hands and make sure that there is no abnormalities and um, scars or bruises or cuts. Okay, skin looks good. Tressa, I'm gonna have you grab my hands here. Can you squeeze both hands? Perfect, I am testing strength right here, making sure that she has equal strength. You never wanna do just one hand and then the other because I cannot compare the strength. So you wanna be able to compare the grip and make sure both sides are equal. So your strength was great there, Tressa. Here. Next, I'm going to have you push up, okay, and push down. Great. So that was testing all of the strength that we need to. Next, I'm going to check your capillary refill. If your patient has painted nails like Tressa does, which is fine, you can use the tip of the finger and you're going to just press down and as long as the color returns back to normal pink in three seconds, it'll be okay. If it doesn't and it's greater than three seconds, we have a little bit of a circulatory issue. Um, if there is no nail polish, you just push on the nail bed and watch the nail bed turn back to its normal color. Do you have any numbness or tingling in your hands? Nope. Your fingers, okay. I'm gonna check your pulses here. This is the radial pulse. And I'm checking both to make sure that they are equal. All right, and now I'm gonna just walk you through how to find other pulses. Normally we'd check them bilaterally, but just so you know how to find these pulse areas as well. I'm gonna check, check the brachial here, which is a right by below the bicep muscle there. Okay, I'm gonna check the carotid, which is on the neck. Just go behind the ear and slide down. Never check the carotid on both sides at the same time. You could potentially make your patient pass out. So check one side and then the other. That is the only one that you do not do at the same time. And then I'm gonna check temporal, which is that soft spot right off to the side of the eye there. Okay, so those are the upper pulses. The femoral is 
In the groin area, please do not find this on your patient unless it's an emergency situation. It's very rare that we have to do that one, but you will reach down into the groin area and it you have to push pretty hard to find that one as well. But it's usually found with babies, pediatric kids, and emergency situations, so you won't use that one very frequently. And now I'm gonna move to the lower part of the body to do the rest of the assessment. Okay, Tressa, I'm gonna look at your legs now. So patient with a gown, it would be easy to look at um, the entire leg. We're just gonna look at the lower legs though for today. Looking, same thing with the arms. Is there any deformities, abnormalities, bruises, scars? Taking note of any scars, she has a scar on her knee, probably from being a little kid running around. Um, scooter crash. Sc scooter <laughs> crash, you remember it. <laughs> So I'm looking at her legs here, looking also for swelling. We're gonna check for edema, and where you're gonna check for edema is right here on the shin bone. You're gonna push down, and if it doesn't indent, she's good, there's no edema. If it does indent, there is some edema, and we will get into that in our didactic as well with what levels of edema there are. So I'll check the other side as well and see if there is any edema. There is no edema in her legs. Tressa, can you feel me touching your legs? Yes. Okay. What about your feet? Can you feel me touching your feet? Yes. Okay. Can you wiggle your toes? Perfect. I'm now going to test strength on um, her feet as well and legs. So Tressa, push down like you're pushing on a gas pedal. Perfect. And now pull those toes up towards your nose. Great. Okay. Equal strength there. And last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to check cap refill and pulses. I'm only going to take one of your socks off though, Tressa. Okay. With our patients, we will <laughs> do both but you'll check for pedal pulse. With the pedal pulse, I'll describe it on this foot here, there's a bone. You're gonna just find that bone and slide just off to the side, and that is where you're gonna find that pedal pulse. They can be kind of tricky to find, and that's okay. If you have trouble, please ask your instructor and we'll come and help you find that pedal pulse. And so find the pedal pulse. I'm gonna compare both pedal pulses now. Okay, both are equal. The other pulse I'm gonna find, show you is the posterior tibialis. Find that bony prominence on the inside of the ankle and just slide back from there. It's a little indentation and that is where that posterior tibialis pulse should be. Okay, one more pulse and this one's a difficult one. Um, I've only found it on a few students and a few patients so it's okay if you struggle with it. So I'm going to show you the popliteal pulse. This is where you find the top of the kneecap and you go right below that kneecap area with your both hands in the end and you're going to just have the patient dead weight in your ha um, hands so you can feel that pulse because it is a very deep artery that you're trying to find there. So that one takes practice to find. When you are in lab, we get to practice that and be hands-on and practice with each other, each other finding that popliteal pulse and your instructors can help you find that as well. Okay, so those are your pulses that you'll find on the patient and you will practice each of these in lab as well as in clinical. Last thing that I want to show you is cap refill. And then that is pretty much our entire assessment there. All right, so cap refill, it's the same thing as what we did with the fingers. Her toenails are painted. So I'm just going to do the tip of the toe and watch for the three seconds of cap refill. If there's toenail polish on, you'll do that. If there is no toenail polish, you'll do the uh, on the toenail just like you would with the finger now. Also with our elderly patients, which in clinical being first semester, you'll work with a lot more of the elderly patients. Their nails may be thicker and hard to see through, so you may have to use the tip of the toe as well for that because you can't see the cap fill through the toes there. I think I have done everything. Yeah. Okay. So that is a head-to-toe physical assessment. It takes practice. It's going to feel like it takes forever when you first start, but it does get better and it gets quicker as you go through a physical assessment.